2 Corinthians 12. One of these days we'll get new bodies and we'll just float. Gravity happens sometimes, amen? 2 Corinthians 12, verse 1. Paul's testimony, it is expedient. Uh, it is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 13 or 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven, and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. Isn't it amazing to have a vision so real that you cannot, when you're remembering it, you cannot tell whether it actually happened physically or it happened in your mind. That's a, that, to me, that's amazing. Um, sometimes our dreams are like that. We have a dream so real that we wake up thinking that it actually happened. But anyways, caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. So Paul, you know, again, the first part of this sounds like Paul is referring to somebody else. But these last uh Verses 5 and 6 kind of makes it sound like it was him. And he won't glory in that. He'll glory in it because he's setting up from verse 7 on. He's setting up about his thorns in the flesh. So verses 5 and 6, he says, I'll not glory in this. So it kind of sounds like it, it happened to Paul. So maybe that's what Peter was referring to when he said, uh, when he when he reads Paul, some things are hard to be understood. So anyway, uh, what is the third heaven? Let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. We touched on some of this last Sunday, but I just kind of want to move forward from there. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And so in verse 6, the Bible said, Genesis chapter 1, verse 6, let there be a firmament. In the midst of the waters, let it divide the waters from the waters. So we have water at ground level, and we have water above us. Uh, there was uh, a geology report that came out about a year or so ago, maybe a few years more, maybe a few years ago, where the Scientists announced that under our feet lies a vast ocean of water. Really? Yeah. Genesis 6 or Genesis 7, the Bible says the fountains of the great deep opened up. So a vast ocean of water underneath the ground confirms what we know from scripture about where the water came from in the flood it fell down from the heavens it came up from underneath the earth so much water that it covered the highest mountain how high above the highest mountain I'll give you a free dvd if you can tell me the answer to that 15 cubits very go very good you get a free, a free DVD back here. I won't charge you a cent for it. It'll be blank. There won't be anything on it, but it's free. All right. Anyway, so there's water down here. There's water at ground level. There is a vast ocean of water above our heads circling the earth at all times is this amazing amount, amazing volume of water that's being held up there by atmospheric pressure and once again we're having one of those low pressure systems move through our area and so that's what makes everybody hurt real bad and that low pressure because the pre air pressure is low that means that 
water is going to cut loose and it's going to come down. When you have high pressure, then it's held up there. Those are the pillars of heaven the Bible talks about. Uh, verse 7, And God made the firmament, divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. So we have, since we know where God lives, is referred to as the third heaven, what are the first and second heavens? Uh, the word firmament. If you want to do a little study on this, and I'll just say this, I'm not going to dwell on it much, but those who are inclined to believe that the earth is flat and that there is a, this is, they, they have to keep adding things to, to this idea. Um, things that, knowledge that you and I take for granted, uh, they question everything. And really, it's a big misunderstanding of a lot of things. But they say the earth is like this. This is flat. And over it is a hard shell. Hard shell like this. It's impenetrable. Means nothing can pass through it. Because they see the word firm in firmament. So they make an assumption that that means then that it's like a hard glass or a hard rock shell above the earth and there is no outer space, there's no space, there's nothing, just that hard shell and the sun and the moon and the stars are like all stuck or some of them say they are projections. And I, I've listened to them one of their big dogs believes that the moon is a projection. And the Illuminati own the projectors. I don't get that. But anyway. But the word firmament doesn't necessarily just mean that it's like a hard rock shell. The definition of the word is an expanse. And that is defined by Scripture. Look at verse 20 of Genesis chapter 1. God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that they may fly above the earth in what? The open firmament of heaven. So what does that tell you? It's not closed it's not this hard, impenetrable shell. It is the open firmament. Mean, and, and there's one place in the book of Job where it describes the heaven as like a molten looking glass. Now, anything that's molten is not hard. It's liquid. It's penetrable. So, they, you know, you read one verse, you think you know everything, read the rest of them. Then you might know something. But that's what the word firmament literally means expanse. From the Hebrew word here in Genesis 1 is rakah. And it literally means to spread out. And there are verses in the Bible that absolutely say those exact words. That God spread out the heavens. He stretched out the heavens as a curtain. So... The firmament then, above us, there is the firmament of the first heaven, which is the atmosphere, all of the air, and intermittently outside, if you look, there's going to be sunshine today, and there's going to be, it's going to be partly cloudy, and it already is. Sun was shining when we started Sunday school, now it's cloudy again. And again, what's holding all of those clouds up there? What's holding all of that heavy water up there? And it is... The pillars of the firmament, the pillars of heaven, where the heavens are, that water is supported by atmospheric pressure or air pressure. If you've ever flown uh, in a commercial airliner on a cloudy day, sometimes you'll notice 
that you fly up and go through one cloud level only to look up and there's another one up there. Okay, so two layers of that. But anyway, that's the first heaven. Is the expanse, the open heaven above us where all of the, all the little birdies fly. Now, I want you to think about something. If the, if the heaven, he's, cause he said the, and, uh, on, this is day five of creation, Genesis chapter one, verse 20. He creates the fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. If you put on your Bible glasses and think for a little bit. When Jesus told us the parable of the seed and the sower, he said when he gave the parable, he said some seed fell by the wayside and he said the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. But when he gave the meaning of it, he said then Satan cometh immediately. So in, to me, that passage, Jesus is teaching you the language of the Bible. And he's saying that the angels or the angelic realm, they have what on their backs? They have wings. We know Satan referred to as the dragon or the fiery flying serpent. So he uses our visible language. In other words, we see birds in the air with wings. So we know that that's how they move around in the air. He's using that language for us. And then in describing what he means, he then goes up one level and says that the fowls are basically the angelic realm. They are the fowls of the air are the visible. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They are what we can see visibly and they represent what we cannot see with our physical eyes. We've, we can't see angels, except for on occasion. Has anybody ever, because the Bible says you might be entertaining angels unaware. Has anybody ever felt like you met someone that you suspected was an angel? See, Megan was looking at you and I was going to call your name out. I'm going, Chris, has you ever, tell us that story. Yeah. I thought it was strange because we're protecting the bird, but they yeah. didn't do it. So I go back to the car and the guy comes up and robs me. Yeah, I got robbed. And so then I was able to go back to the uh, payphone and I called the policeman and came out. But in the meantime, a car pulled up behind me and I thought, oh no, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> this guy came up to the car and he said, I saw you were broke down. Come on. I like it already. Wow. And he did. He stood there that whole time. And then he left. And I said, I believe he's going to go. What kind of car do they drive? What kind of car do they drive? You better float it up. I wouldn't know. I didn't say this motor was headlight. Why? It was a Plymouth. Had to be. Probably was. Lord cometh in a fury, the Bible says. <laughs> That's pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah. We had. We were having a church barbecue dinner on Sunday afternoon. And we had a big tent set up out there. And most of us were eating. All the cooking was done outside. Most of us were eating outside. And man, you know, we get this because we're right off Highway 67, Highway 55. We're kind of at that corner. So we'll get people from time to time. And a guy walked in while we're standing there eating. And he said he was trying to get, I can't remember, Chicago or something like that. And he had nothing. He was hitchhiking. He said he was hitchhiking. 
and he had nothing. And so my immediate thought is we need to feed this man. So here we are eating all this food and I'm going, there's no way in the world I'm going to turn this guy away with all this food sitting out here. There's no way in the world I'm sending him out hungry. I ain't, my ancestors would come up out of the grave and get me. So we fed him and then we offered him a ride to kind of, he didn't know from here how to get to Chicago, so we said, we'll put you in the right direction. And we drove as far north. Somebody took the church van. Two guys took him in the church van up here to, I think, Lee May Ferry in 270 and dropped him off. And they said, they dropped him off. They got off of Lee May Ferry, that bridge there, because, you know, then he can cross the river and get into Illinois. And when they got to the bridge, they let him out, and then they went down Lee May Ferry and turned around to just turn around to get back on 270 and that guy was gone just like that he was gone so I kind of thought that we might have entertained an angel unaware and that's the thought that occurred to me was this guy might be I don't know we, the Bible says unaware so we'll probably never know till we get there but I believe that uh, yes ma'am Mm -hmm. I um, was on, I lived in Joplin, that's my hometown, and I was on Interstate 44, and mm -hmm. drove off the highway between two bridges, and there was a 100 foot drop, and mm. missed the road that was underneath it, and landed into the, the creek. Um, I don't remember the fall or anything, because my airbag went off, knocked me unconscious, I don't remember any of it, um, but everyone was saying that there was a gentleman Mm. Um, which lodged me in the middle of the car, but this gentleman was holding my head above, keeping me from drowning. Um, just walked out with a couple scratches, no broken bones, nothing. And once the news people got there, he, he was gone. Yeah. Most people, they want to be recognized for what they did. What yeah. They the news and, but they couldn't find him after that. I believe it. I sure do. When the Bible tells us these things, that they're, he's given his angels charge over us, then we can expect that at times in life, we might have a suspicion that one of God's angels was protecting us to keep us. So we have, I mean, we have a lot of stories. But anyway, my point is that the, the first heaven that we can see with our eyes is God is showing us what the other heaven looks like. So we can see these creatures flying around through the air. That is a visible symbol of what is in the invisible realm. Okay, does that, does that make sense to everybody? So we have, in our heaven, we have creatures that fly around with wings. In the other heaven, there are creatures that fly around that have wings. The Bible teaches us that. So anyway, that's just kind of give you that picture if it since we have never seen the third heaven we have a picture of what it looks like when we see this heaven amen now deuteronomy chapter 10 turn there deuteronomy 10 first kings 8 teach us about the third heaven but it's not using the language third heaven Deuteronomy 10, 14, give you a couple seconds to turn there and underline that, maybe write a little note next to that verse, third heaven. Deuteronomy 10, 14, behold the heaven of the heaven of heavens. How many times is heaven in that verse? Three times. The heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God, the earth also, with all that therein is. So we have the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the heaven. If you are in, if you're in the, if you're flying around in the air, there is still another heaven above you, which is the cosmos, 
the Greek, that's the Greek word for it, or the Russian word for it, the cosmos, where they get the word cosmonaut. The cosmos or space is the heaven above our heaven, but there is also a heaven above that heaven. And that's where God, and so think about it, where God dwells, when the Bible says that God is the most high, that means that he exists in the heaven of heavens. The first two heavens, this air layer and space, God does not dwell in those two places. He dwells in the highest of all heavens, making him the most high. Now think about, think about what Lucifer said in Isaiah 14. I will ascend into heaven. And then he says, I will be like the most high. He said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Satan, and you can't get any lower to the ground than a snake. Even ants and roaches do not go around on their belly. The tiniest space underneath their legs, they're still higher than a serpent is. The serpent is, if God is the most high, then Satan is the most low. And then, after that, for a thousand years, where does God put him? In the bottomless pit, he's lower than everybody now. And going to be that way for a thousand years. But he wants to ascend above the height of the clouds. He wants to ascend above that. Wants to ascend above the second heaven. And he wants to ascend to the third heaven to be like the most high God. But then the Bible says God's going to bring him down. So behold the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord thy God. First Kings 8. First Kings 8 is... Solomon dedicating the temple that he built to God. So 1 Kings 8, 27 and Deuteronomy 10, 14, you can write a little note in your Bible. Uh, uh, 1 Kings 8, 27, you can make a, if your Bible doesn't connect those two verses, you can by writing a little note there. First Kings 8, 27, but will God indeed dwell in the earth? No, the most high God will not. Behold the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have built. Solomon got it right. Solomon knew that even though he's going to build this grand, magnificent temple, the walls, the ceiling, the floors were lined with gold. Can you imagine that? A golden temple, which, by the way, the temple in heaven where God dwells, the whole city. What's heaven made out of? Gold. The entire city of New Jerusalem is made out of pure. God's rich. Amen. God's rich. But anyway, the heaven and the heaven of heaven. Solomon realized that that little puny little temple that he built. Was nowhere big enough for God to dwell in. God was way bigger than his temple. God is way bigger than the heaven, this air. God is way bigger than the entire universe. God is even bigger than the third heaven. There isn't anything that can contain God. Nothing. So here in the Old Testament, you get the idea. Again, 1 Kings 8, 27, you have three the word heaven three times in here. That's the third heaven is what it's referring to. So now take a look up on the screen. You have, this is, you don't have, I'm not giving a test on this. So you don't have to remember this if you don't want. The troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere. Those are the four layers of the first heaven. Air is just like water. Uh, on the surface of, of the water, um, the water is warm. And what that means is the water molecules are spread out. Warm air is thinner than cold air. Cold air is dense. So that's just like the, on the top layer of water where it's warm. That's because the water molecules are spread out from each other. 
But at the bottom layer, the water is very, very dense. Um, the reason why certain submarines, naval submarines, so on, they can only go so far down because if they go, oh, there was a, what was it, Argentina? An Argentina submarine, naval submarine, went missing a while back and there was uh, the sound, they thought they heard the faint sound of a submarine implosion. And what they finally found the submarine and its parts were just scattered all over the place, all over the ocean floor. And what they say happened was it had an electrical failure. The entire electrical system of this submarine died. And they, they need power to keep that submarine afloat. They use air tanks. They pull in water for ballast. If they want to go down, you know, bring in water and that takes it down. They want to go up, let the water out. But when the electrical system of the submarine failed, there was no way to keep it up. And it started going down and it finally got to a point to where it could not sustain the amount of water pressure. And it just imploded, which means it crushed it. And everybody on there dies quicker than instantly. You know, it's one of those things where you never know what hit you. But anyway, that, they found that uh, last week. That just brought it. But anyway, the idea that air is in layers because down here, the air is thicker. You go up to Denver, Colorado. That's the mile high city, they call it. The air is thinner. The higher you go up, the air is, gets thinner and thinner and thinner. So that's the first heaven that we have, all right? That's the second heaven. This is one of my favorite pictures, okay? 19, 19, early 1990s, we sent the Hubble telescope up, and then they fixed it. And when they fixed it, I, I watched a YouTube documentary about this. They took an area of space that to all the telescopes that we had had nothing in it it was completely dark and it's about this big okay if you were to take your finger and do like that just the barely amount of light that you can go through if you hold that up somewhere in space that's what they they aimed the Hubble telescope there for 10 days and they were just letting this light creep in from the farthest place possible and this is what they saw now every one of those dots that you see there is not a star every one of those dots that you see is a galaxy and a galaxy has billions and billions of stars in it and they are huge galaxies are massive okay so every one of those points of light that you see, they are from the farthest places that we can presently see, even with the space telescope. The reason why it's in space, because you can, there's no air to, to block our view. And we can see, they, they tell us 12 billion light years away from the earth. That's the farthest that we can see that is the second heaven. Now, here's what I believe. I believe that every one of those little dots of light, every one of those stars has a name. Because God has named every single one of them. That blows my mind. I have problems remembering 20 names. Okay? But God knows the name of every star and the Bible teaches us that those stars are angels. There are things about them that we cannot see because they do not exist in our realm. But I believe what the Bible says and God, there's an innumerable amount of and God has a name for every single one of them. So that's the second heaven. How long did it take man since the creation? How long did it take man to be able to navigate the first heaven? 
Wright brothers, right? Early 1900s. Then we started sending planes up into the atmosphere and we learned how to put man in the first heaven. We are barely able to put man into the second heaven. If you saw the news, they launched another rocket to Mars, putting another scientific instrument thing on Mars. Do you know how long it took to get there? Anybody know? Seven months. Which is quick, because normally it takes about eight to ten months. Even at, when Mars is at its closest to the Earth, you're talking about an eight or nine month trip going at about a hundred and some odd thousand miles an hour okay that's how that's how far mars is think about all these stars we're not anywhere near the next star closest to us we're nowhere near it so to think that the heaven the second heaven is as large as what it is we know that we will never be able to to navigate through all of this, if God tarries his coming, we'll never be able to do this. And yet, there, are, there is something that is way beyond that. Psalm 18, turn there. Oh, I like this. Mm, I like this. Psalm 18, Ezekiel 1 is where we're going to be. Psalm 18, verse 9, he bowed the heavens also. A bow does this, a rainbow, it's an ark, and came down. God literally, from where he is to where we are, God, when you, a string represents a straight line. And when you bow the string, you're pulling it in closer to something. And that apparently is what God did. He made the distance shorter or something. I don't know. That's just my guess. But he bowed the heavens. He came down and darkness was under his feet. Which is why the sky is dark at night. See how easy that is? Darkness is under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. And his pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies, notice that skies is plural. There's one sky above us, that's the first heaven. The second sky is the universe or space. That also is above us. And according to the scripture, what separates, what separates our planet Earth from space is a layer of water, right? Where the clouds are. And according to the scriptures, and we cannot see this, but according to the scriptures, what separates then the second heaven from the third heaven is a layer of what the Bible calls water. Now, I think it's a different type of water. I don't want to get into that this morning. I have my little theories. But apparently there is another layer that separates our second heaven from the third heaven. Seen by the Israelites crossing the Red Sea. They went through a body of water to get to the promised land. When Joshua was leading Israel, he had to cross a body of water. In this case, it was the river Jordan to get to the promised land. And what God is telling... So think about when the Israelites got into the promised land, how many bar bodies of water did they cross to get there? First one was the Red Sea... The second one was the River Jordan. So you think two layers of water separating us from where the promised land is, that is separating us in the first heaven, going to the second heaven, to the third heaven. All right? Ezekiel chapter 1, turn there. The likeness, Ezekiel 1, the likeness of the firmament, 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 the like, see if I do a watchman broadcast, I can edit that out. This is live. Everybody's going to hear it. The likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. 
And then verse 26, and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. What color is a sapphire stone? What color is the sky? That, man did not make this up. Man did not write the, the book of Ezekiel and say, well, the sky is blue, so where God dwells, he's sitting on top of a blue crystal. You would th Other people think that that's what man made up. Because they see the sky blue, the sky looks like a sapphire crystal, so therefore what God sits on is a blue crystal. But that's not what happened. The sky just happens to match because God made it that way. It matches perfectly what a sapphire, and of course God made sapphires. So there is a sea of glass, clear as crystal, S-E-A of glass, clear as crystal, molten glass and it's the same color as the blue sky during the day okay so i hopefully i like to go outside and look look at trees look at the sky look at clouds look at stars look at the creation and i don't worship goddess gaia i worship the most high god who made this creation so next time you go outside and you see that blue sky, you're going to think of the crystal sea that God's throne rests on and it's above you. It's a good question. She asked, why, did, why is it called the terrible crystal? I think that it's like when the Israelites heard the voice of God, it terrorized them. I think seeing the actual crystal sea that God's throne is on or above it would freak us out to use 21st century language it would literally blow our mind to see it with our own eyes does that make sense now okay Ezekiel's looking at it going <gasps> just stunned in amazement at what God is showing him so next time you go outside, you see the clouds, think of what separates us from heaven. Next time you go, when Jesus comes back, how's he coming? In the clouds. In the clouds. Okay. Next time you go out and see the blue sky, you're going to think of that sea of glass, that sapphire glass that God's throne is on. God is above you, watching over you every single day. You go out at night, you see the darkness of space. You're going to think of the darkness that is under God's feet. You're going to know that God truly is up there. Amen. Amen. And he sent his son down here. I don't know about you, but once I go to heaven, I don't want to come back. Amen. Father in heaven, I love this book. I love what it is, what it says. Lord, you know my mind. You created it. You know how it works. And Lord, I just look at the Bible and I believe it. And when I see the world around me and the creation around me, I know this Bible's right in everything it said. Man did not create this. Man did not invent this. Man did not fantasize the Bible. You gave him the words to write down because it is exactly how everything of your creation is. Father, just bless and open up our minds and our hearts. The world that we live in now is a science world. People are trying to gain knowledge. And Father, I thank you, God, that this Bible, we find out, is never wrong. Bless your word. Open it up to our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen.